So this is my little trail cam that I've got rigged up to this tree here and all it is, it's got a little motion sensor on the front so each time some wildlife walks past this gets triggered and captures a 30 second video clip and over the last couple of years it's captured some really nice footage of some of the local fallow stags and roe deer, foxes, things like that so I just thought it would be a nice little added bonus to show the footage that this captures on the end of each episode so what I'll do in the end of this episode is show some footage that this captured last year I think and then hopefully you'll just enjoy seeing clips of deer bouncing around and just enjoying their natural habitat. So what I want to do today is take on one of my very typical woodland explorations which isn't so much about going out and capturing nice images, it's just about discovery, scouting, sketching, you know, just finding something new. So I've come to a spot which I don't know anything about, I've not been here before. I've seen it from a distance and I've been looking on Google satellite view, so I'm kind of quietly confident that we're going to find something worthwhile. So you're going to see it firsthand as I walk through. So fingers crossed, we'll find something great. So as you can see behind me here, this new location is looking pretty damn sweet. I'm quite excited by this. I've literally walked about a hundred yards into this wood and I'm already seeing loads of potential. There's all these really nice sort of big moody oak trees which are probably remnants of the ancient oak forest. There's this little quaint beck. There's silver birch with fairly clean bark, which is quite a rare thing around here. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good. But like I said, today isn't about capturing great images. To, yeah, Meg's getting excited by it as well. Um, yeah, it's it's not about great images, the conditions are really quite sort of flat and dull but those are great conditions for doing the scouting missions because there's no distracting light, you can just look, like, look at a fairly clean scene and start to work on your compositions. Um, but yeah, so one, one of the most enjoyable aspects of photography for me is that pre-visualisation. It's looking at a composition and deciding you know, what works, when, when, what time of day is this going to work, what time of year is it going to work when the colour pal palette changes, where do I want the light to fall, just things like that. And by going through that process and repeating it over and over again and just really just coming out and enjoying being, being in this environment, it just means that when the conditions are right, you can just turn up, you know exactly what you're going to do and take the shot and it's nailed. And that kind of whole process of realization of what you've pre-visualized it can be quite a long process but it that kind of level of patience is the difference between a good shot and what could be a really great shot so yeah i've I, like I said, this woodland isn't particularly big but i'm gonna have a wander around and see what i can find you know but yeah it's looking great <laughs>
So the only camera I'm taking pictures with today is this little compact, which is my old vlogging cam. And it's perfect for little scouting missions like this because it just fits in my pocket. Um, or you can use your mobile phone as well, or sometimes you use that. Um, but it takes raw files, so I can actually get some pretty decent pictures from it. Um, and it gives me different aspect ratio options as well. So that just helps with a pre-visualization and also just trying out different compositions. So anything that I like the look of, I can just snap away with this and I can review the images later and it just gives me a more kind of in, allows me to have a more informed and considered decision on the images that I want to come back and shoot when the, when the conditions are better. But as an example, I quite like this scene behind me here. Uh, we've got some real nice sort of tree detail. Uh, we've got different levels of trees, so that's going to give some real nice depth when we get a nice foggy morning. We've got the oak trees on the left-hand side there, anchoring the composition there. The oak branch that goes over the top, that's kind of framing the top of the scene. We've got a glimpse of the stream down here, which disappears around the corner. That's really nice. So I think I'd like to come back when there's been more rain, so there's more kind of character and mood and movement in the stream. Um, but at the minute, it's just a little bit too green, I think. I want to wait for autumn to kick in a little bit more, get some nice orange leaves and some wait for this bracken to get those nice rusty colours. Um, but yeah, I think this could work, so I'll show you that one, and I'll put lots of other examples at the end of the video so you can see what I've been snapping with this. Now a little while back I asked for some questions for a Q&A video. Now I've never got around to shooting that video, uh, so what I want to do instead is cover some of those questions as and when it feels appropriate to do so in a regular video. Uh, one of the questions was uh, by Atia or Attila GN, what's your story? And Sean Tucker had asked why woodland, in fact a few people I think have wondered why woodland. Now, I can categorically say that I would not be shooting woodland and, and I would not be filming these vlogs if I hadn't have developed an injury about five and a half years ago. It was something that left me with chronic pain. I had to kind of go out and seek physical and mental therapies. Um, and that's where photography came in. Um, I was doing sort of photography before that, but you know, on a more kind of casual basis. So I became more passionate about it and the kind of the level of attention to detail that's required and the variety and the mood and atmosphere and wildlife in Woodland, it just gave me that constant distraction that I needed and nothing has helped me as much as that. Apart from Meg, she's absolutely, she's so important to my photography as well and the reason is that um, I've always wanted a dog but my partner Adele, she's actually allergic to dogs but she's sort of very selfishly um, at, at the time realized that a dog would really help me and as it happened a friend was breeding labradoodle so we went to we went to see them we saw meg absolutely loved her to bits uh, adele didn't react so it was, it was brilliant you know and a few months later she was or six weeks later and she was she was ours so she's always been with me when i've been taking photos she's always been that kind of constant distraction as well so kind of in a nutshell you know, woodland and the well-being and being with Meg is absolutely fundamental to my photography. And, you know, I'd encourage anyone just to find that thing that evokes that emotional response, just that location that they love. It doesn't matter where it is, woodland or the top of a mountain or on a beach with the waves crashing around your feet. Just so long as it's kind of got that genuine emotional connection and you just love being there, then I think that's, well, for me personally, that's what's made the biggest difference to my photography. Just a genuine love for being there, being with Meg. She's making me laugh because she's falling asleep behind me. She's just like, yeah, 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 get on with it. Um, so yeah, the kind of passion and emotional connection, that's what makes the biggest difference. So if you just sort of love being there without the camera, then that's the place to be.
So I've seen loads of stuff that I like the look of. I've been snapping away with this little camera and for such a small woodland, I think there's endless compositions and like most places that I go to, it's so quiet. I've not seen anybody. There is a public footpath which runs through, but there's very little evidence of anybody being along there. So uh, yeah, this is, this is a great find. And these silver birch are a great find as well, because like I said, silver birch with fairly clean bark are quite a rare find here. So to find these big mature ones is, is great. And I think they make quite a nice shot. The space in between them is not too bad. Uh, but we've got quite a nice opening through there where there's a distant silver birch which was snapped and revealed the oak tree in the background. So I think that makes quite a nice shot. But yeah, when scouting, it's not just about scouting for subjects, it's scouting about where the light's going to be. And it's coming up to about midday, the light's over there. Come to the evening time in autumn when the light's over in that direction, we're going to get some real nice side light on the silver birch. All this bracken is thankfully starting to die off and uh, that's going to get some nice rusty colours and when it's damp that's going to shine really nicely. So yeah, I've taken, like I say, I've taken a shot with this um, but I think this is going to be another one to come back to. Um, but yeah, um, I've got bibbers another hour or two so I'm just going to keep on looking and keep on snapping. So I would say that was a really successful outing. I'm so pleased to have found this spot. I can't wait to capture some images here and share them with you in the future. But for now, hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If there's anything that you didn't like, please leave a comment below. Uh, another quick reminder that I do run one-to-one -one workshops and group workshops next year. Um, if you think you'd be interested in that, then click the link up there. There's my website address and you can find all the information there. Um, oh, and one more thing, stay tuned for the footage from the trail cam. Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you for the next one.